Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. And in this episode, I wanna talk about a term called optimistic nihilism, which is something that I learned about very recently, uh, thanks to everything, everywhere, all at once. That's a term that in a lot of the reviews has been used in discussing it. And it's something that seemed to fit really well with sort of my worldview and so forth. And I thought it'd be worthwhile to share and consider if you're unfamiliar with the term. Now, before I fully get into it though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you, because there's so many episodes and I try to cater to, you know, whatever sort of field you might be interested in, in terms of pursuing the arts. But, Without further digression, let's get into this. Nihilism, as you may be aware, a, a sort of ideology uh, started by Friedrich Nietzsche, philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, is this idea that life is meaningless, right? I mean, in summation, that's what the, the, the philosophy is about. So then how do you put optimistic in front of it? And what does that mean? Well, I'm going to read from the, uh, a definition, right? Optimistic nihilism views the belief that there is no underlying meaning to life from a perspective of hope. It's not that we're doomed to live in a meaningless universe. It's that we get the chance to experience ourselves and the universe we share. So what does that really mean? Well, it means, yes, there are problems in the world and you don't have to be blind to it. But enjoy the moments that you got because it's all you got, right? That means with friends, with family, you know, the things that you're doing. It, it, it really is, to me, a compass for centering yourself in terms of what's important in life. And Because I think it, it, it's almost like a, it's both a reaction to the inauthenticness of the world that we've tried to build through capitalism and, and you know, just consumerism and, and all that, where it's like, do more, do more, get more, get more, get more, right? More, more, more. Uh, and, you know, so it's like, that's, that, that's stuff, like, throw that stuff out, you know? It doesn't bring true value to your life. You know, seeing the world, seeing it with people and the small moments in life that's what truly matters. At the same time, and being grateful for them because knowing that you could call it the vastness of life if you want, um, meaning, you know, in a lot of ways, it's sad, like, most people will never really, you know, even our closest friends don't always know everything, everything about us. You know, and in life, the people that we interact with, they know a fraction of us. You know, they know us as something. They might know you, you as a grandfather, a parent, uh, a child, right? Um, and then they get to see other roles that you play in life. But they don't always know you. And so, and then, you know, we die essentially. And for the most part, you know, some people carry our legacy, but there's so many people that are just lost in the ether, you know, in a sense. And that could be very depressing, but all the more reason of, like, just live your life. <laughs> and it doesn't mean be reckless and senseless, but have the gratitude for the things in your life that you do have and enjoy those moments because we don't get many of them, you know? And it's not to discourage whatever religion you might believe in. If there is a heaven, that's great. But why wait to heaven to live a beautiful life? You know, create, let's create heaven here. And if there is a heaven, great. 
And that's the way I consider all this stuff. And try to move about in the world. And I thought, maybe it's worth sharing. Maybe for some other people, this might be useful. Because sometimes once we, when we have the language, we can have a North Star, right? Like sometimes you ever have that sense that you know something, but you can't verbalize it. And then somebody else verbalizes it for you. And you're like, yes, yes, exactly. I've been thinking that. It just kind of vindicates you sort uh, in a way. And more so just orients you, right? It's like, okay, cool. I'm not crazy. This makes sense. And it gives you, it, yeah, it just gives you that language to be able to then be conscious about the way you move in life, right? And being conscious means to be present. That's a beautiful thing. That's what we all really want in life. Deep down, we might not be conscious of it, but deep down, yes. Because that's the most beautiful thing. So in that sense, yeah, optimistic nihilism for me makes sense. Maybe you disagree with it. That's fine. But I thought I'd share it nonetheless. And so now I open the floor to you. Let me know your thoughts, any questions you might have down in the comment section, or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. I would love to hear from you about this, you know, because it's so fascinating to me. You know, what is your perspective in life? Uh, as always, thank you for taking the time to tune in. If you appreciate the things that I do and think you would benefit uh, from more direct interaction but can't afford my coaching, that's okay. Uh, that's what my Patreon page is for, patreon.com slash philosvitek. It's at a, at a much discounted rate. You get more you know, interactions with me directly through the various tiers of support. So consider that if that's your jam. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you and hope to see you next time.